Hello, my name is Michael Brooks. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Sullivan County Legislature, and on behalf of our Chairman, Robert Doherty, and the rest of the Sullivan County Legislature, welcome to today's Town Hall event. With us today are our County Manager, Joshua Potosik, our Director of Public Health, Nancy McGraw, and our guest today is Saray Gonzalez. She is the Program Director of Sullivan 180 and our Census Coordinator. We're going to start today with Saray, Saray, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, and thank you to Chairman Doherty for inviting me to speak today. Um, good morning, everyone. As Mike mentioned, my name is Saray Gonzalez. I'm the Program Director at Selwyn 180 and the Complete Count Census Coordinator for Selwyn County. Selwyn 180 is pleased to work with the Complete Count Committee and community partners in making sure we have a successful 2020 U.S. count as this effort aligns closely with our mission. For those of you who don't know us, Health 180 is a nonprofit organization to create and help improve the health and well being of the residents in Sullivan County. Health 180's mission is to help build a healthy, vibrant Sullivan County where everyone has a sense of purpose, connection to family and community, and access to fresh foods and an active lifestyle. Improving the health of Sullivan County residents means making improvements in community safety educational attainment, safe housing, access to transportation, and employment opportunities, as well as ensuring access to health, to quality health services. Addressing these issues requires not only our community's commitment, but also resources and funding. In order to receive adequate and appropriate resources, we have to be counted. This is why an accurate count for Selwyn County is so important. Census data determines annual allocations of hundreds of billions of dollars in federal funding for the next 10 years. This funding helps shape many aspects of our community. In other words, participation means money for daycares, hospitals, school programs, food services, roadway improvements, housing assistance, employment opportunities, healthcare assistance, and other vital services, not to mention full representation in Congress. Sullivan County has historically been undercounted and underrepresented in Congress for decades. Out of 62 counties in New York, we are the next to the lowest, 60, 61st in terms of, of response, self-response. To date, only 30% of Sullivan County households have responded to the 2020 census, compared to 56% in New York State and 61% in the nation. We have the power to change that. As we do our part to help stop the spread of COVID-19, we cannot ignore that in order to be prepared for tomorrow's crisis, we must complete the census and be counted in order to receive congressional representation and federal funding. We still have time. The census deadline has, ex has been extended to October 31st. It's never been easier to complete the census. You can respond online at my2020census.gov or call 844-330-2020 for English or 844-468-2020 for Spanish. The Update and Leave program has now begun, so questionnaires will also be left at your doorsteps. All information is kept confidential and will not be shared with any government agency nor immigration. If you have a seasonal home in Sullivan County, you need to respond to the questionnaire for that address as well. It is easy, it's, it's an easy, free, and important way to help your community, your friends, neighbors, and family. And finally, business leaders, please encourage your clients, customers, and employees to fill out the census. Town supervisors and village mayors, tell your constituents. And please follow and like us on Facebook and Instagram at Sullivan County Counts, and do your part to help our communities. Thank you. Thank you, Saray. And with that, there was a lot of great information. So people who are watching today and will be watching later, please spread the word uh, on the census. We've talked about it a lot here. It's extremely important. And there really is not a good reason for us to be uh, near the bottom. Um, just a matter of people uh, making it a priority and just completing it. So thank you once again. And we'll, we actually have in our Q&A segment, a question for Saray. So we'll hear from her a little later. We're going to start off with our questions with Nancy, as we usually do. 
And Nancy, what are the latest figures, confirmed cases, people currently hospitalized, people currently recovered, people who have died, and how many tested? Nancy, welcome. Good afternoon. How's everybody today? Um, I just want to mention that immediately following this um, Zoom town hall meeting, we will be updating the dashboard. Um, and I'm also happy to report that we have no new cases today. Uh, we had five new cases yesterday. And the day before that, we had no new cases. So we're continuing to uh, see all of our numbers decrease. <clears throat> we have 168 uh, active cases, 2,862 off of isolation, 551 on quarantine, uh, 1,402 confirmed cases to date. <coughs> to report. <coughs> Excuse me, I do want to just make a notation that the additional um, deaths are were reported due to a lag. <clears throat> there was a lag in reporting. All of those deaths were, all but one were from nursing homes and so um, we have updated the dashboard. Okay, thank you Nancy. Next question is also for Nancy. And it reads, how is the county going to provide testing to protesters who may have become infected during the numerous protests in the area? Governor Cuomo is concerned about this and is providing increased testing to all who participated in these very necessary protests. Nancy? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm going to go through the questions. Uh, due to this issue and concern about people um, possibly uh, being exposed uh, while they're in large groups of people um, during the protests. And so uh, you can call the coronavirus hotline uh, to get a location of those state-run testing sites. And that's 888-364-3065. Or you can go to coronavirus.health .ny.gov and there's actually a test site locator on their website and you can just type in your zip code and, and your area that you're looking for and get the test site that's at a location nearest you. Thank you Nancy. Next question is for you as well. If a frontline hospital worker has recovered from COVID and are back to work, are they still able to carry the virus and spread it to others? So the answer to that question is no. Um, healthcare workers have to test negative twice after they've initially tested positive and been put on isolation. Uh, they have to test negative twice before they can return to work as a healthcare worker. Um, our local hospital has put this policy into place out of an abundance of caution to protect both the workers and the patients. And um, people are not infectious. Uh, after day nine, uh, but they can continue to test positive uh, long after that. So out of an abundance of caution, um, healthcare workers uh, are not allowed to, to return to work, especially in a hospital or nursing home setting uh, where the patients are most vulnerable until after they test negative twice. Okay, thanks. Next question is for Josh. Will the state's decision on overnight children's camps affect both types of sleepaway camps, secular and religious? Josh, welcome. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, obviously, uh, uh, it, it, it's unlawful to discriminate based upon race, religion, or sexual orientation. So in this case, any, any determinations being made at the state or even local level have to be uh, uh, lawful in that sense that it has to apply as a blanket to, to any any type of camp whether they be secular or religious so yes the state regulations will be applied equally to both um, religious and secular camps okay next question is for josh as well as the as the executive order stands today are either of these types of camps allowed to operate before phase four 
Well, I'll, I'll speak to day camp specifically is that there's obviously no guidance yet on overnight camps that are, are prohibited from opening at this point. But for day camps, um, uh, statewide are allowed to open on June 29th. Um, Sullivan County is, uh, as we've said before, in the Mid-Hudson region. Um, phase four for us, if we continue on our, our path, we are currently in phase two uh, as, as of Tuesday, um, and it would take four weeks from that date to reach uh, phase four. So July, around July 7th would be the date we would reach phase four. So day camps statewide of June 29th are obviously allowed to open before we would potentially reach phase four in the Mid-Hudson region, region of July 7th. Okay, the next question is a two-parter, and it's for Josh. The first part, with day camps not being allowed to open until June 29th, should we expect that the sleepaway camps will not open before day camps? Yeah, I think that's a very safe assumption. Um, obviously, we have, it, it takes some time to come out with guidance and determination, so uh, day camps having guidance and, and having that determination they can open. Um, the state has uh, been silent uh, on whether they will or will not allow sleepaway camps. Um, I, I think it would be surprising that they would uh, be allowed to open before a day camp would. And the second part of that is, and if sleepaway camps cannot open until later in the summer, but a camp opens anyway, whom would investigate this? They would be treated like any other business that would be operating um, outside of an executive order. Um, uh, we get referrals from the from the, the task force at the state level. Um, we could see things locally that don't look right that get referred to law enforcement or a town uh, town uh, code official. Um, so, uh, like I said, the camps would be treated like any other business, uh, depending on what phase they're allowed to open and if they're abiding by the, the required social distancing and, and the, the proper procedures to operate safely. Thank you. Next question is for Nancy. Do you have recent numbers on overdose deaths and Narcan reversals? In other words, what impact has the pandemic had on the opiate epidemic in the county? Nancy. Yes, we participate in an uh, OD map uh, where overdoses and, and fatalities due to overdoses are reported by law enforcement. Uh, and the EMS. Um, from January through today, there were 105 overdoses. 10 of those were fatal, um, and 74 of those uh, overdoses were reversed with naloxone administration. Um, no data on the, the additional uh, overdoses, whether or not naloxone was used. Um, since March uh, 15th, which is about when we saw our first confirmed COVID-19 case in Sullivan County, um, the overdoses have more than doubled. Um, we can't necessarily assume that it's related to um, the, the pandemic, but um, we know that due to the increased isolation, uh, financial stress, and other stressors that people have been experiencing, anecdotally, it's certainly possible that it has contributed to overdoses. This is something that counties statewide are watching very closely, and our participation in ODMAP uh, as an official county would be helpful so that we can uh, glean a lot more COVID-related data from overdoses, uh, which they're also doing nationally. Thank you, Nancy. Next question is for Josh, and it reads, why is it that DMV is still closed we can wait in line to go in a grocery store, but we can't go to DMV. I called this week to make an appointment and was told it would be another two weeks because they are not open. Josh? Yeah, so I think first just remind people that we they are still servicing some transactions through the drop box, which has been pretty successful. So you can come and drop off um, tr completed transactions. Uh, you can call ahead of time and ask what you need to complete and what you need to provide. They will then process and mail you back that completed transaction. Um, we are in the process of looking at how to get appointments up and running um, s safely, um, looking at different um, modifications to the layout of the facility, uh, of PPE requirements or mask requirements for employees, visitors. Um, we hope to have that up pretty shortly. Um, state DMVs and where we're, we're being told guidance is, is, is there is that DMVs can generally open around June 23rd. Um, would put us in fit the date we would be in phase three. So 
I think you're going to see kind of as we um, slowly close down DAV going from full operation to uh, um, appointment only to Dropbox, you'll kind of see that same process in reverse. So you'll see a, probably a couple week period of um, um, appointment onlys and making sure we can operate that safely and then opening fully but there will still likely be some density restrictions obviously in the summer months DMV can get pretty crowded um, we wouldn't be able to allow that to happen um, th th in the near future so there will still have to be some restrictions even once we open fully on how many people we can safely um, have waiting in the DMV lobby thanks Josh our next question is for a guest today Saray why do you think census response rates in Sullivan County are so low? Saray, chance for some commentary. <laughs> That's a great question, really good question. Well, back in March, many people in the county did receive uh, their, the mailed invitations because we have an unusually high rate of households in the county that don't have um, mail delivery but have uh, PO boxes and the questionnaires are not delivered to PO boxes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the update and leave program has begun, so uh, homes should start, um, should expect to receive paper questionnaires again, so that should help. And a second, secondly, we also have a high number of seasonal homeowners, so I don't know that they realize, they may not realize that they need to complete the census also for all of their properties, for each of their homes, so we're trying to push that and, uh, you know, send that message out to everyone as well. All right, great. Thank you, Sir. The last question I will answer. Some of my neighbors are confused and have questions about coronavirus that I just can't answer for them. How do they get in contact with you to clear up some of the confusion? Well, I have a couple numbers for you. For general questions about the virus, they should be referred to the State Department uh, of the State Department of Health hotline at 1-888-364. 3065. Once again, that State Department of Health hotline is 1-888-364-3065. If your questions are specific to Sullivan County, you can contact our Public Health Department at 845-292-5910. Once again, that's 845-292-5910. And with that, I'd like to thank Nancy and Josh and Saray for joining us today. Um, hopefully folks who, who are viewing this, uh, if you didn't know already, it's super important to fill out the census. Um, there's a lot of federal dollars tied to it and, uh, and not to mention our representation as well. Uh, it's very important and like I said earlier, there's no reason why we really should be in the, in the bottom as far as the counties in New York State. So let's change that this go round. It's our chance, one chance in 10 years to do that. So please, let's focus on this, let's make it a priority, and please respond. And with that, I'd like to um, wish everybody a good afternoon, be safe, and bye for now. <laughs>